So if you guys just put your uh, put your na name in the chat, I'll I'll pull it up. Lucas Lee. There might be several, so you need to tell me, uh, is it this one? The student at Lakeside? Advice for new BDRs. Know exactly how your performance is being measured. Um, have quarterly meetings with your manager just to talk about your career progression. And, uh... Make sure you let them know that if you want to get promoted, let them know that that's what you want to do. Not every FSDR, BDR wants to get promoted. There we go. So, good picture, good use of the uh, banner. Although, you know what, the banner, you could use this to make it like more uh, customer centric. So, like if you're prospecting on a you know, through LinkedIn and your prospect kind of sees your profile, you know, your banner should have, I think, something that's maybe a little bit more, um, tells you about the value that your company can provide. So, I mean, this is obviously, you know, best places to work is great, but just, just a thought, it's like, a, it could be a potential, um, way of using the banner. So you, when you think about LinkedIn, you know, you're as a sales professional, you know, you're using LinkedIn to not only, you know, potentially find new jobs, but also to let prospects know, you know, what are you doing within your, uh, within your company. Um, so another thing that I've seen people, sales reps do, I don't do this, but I've seen other sales reps do it is, um, you can kind of use the headline to kind of talk about the value that you provide to, um, or like what challenge, like in, in a quick sentence, like, what do you, what do you do at Datadog? Because when you prospect on LinkedIn, you know, they, they'll see your name and they'll see, like, your headline. But let's see, you know. Um, let's check it out. Commercial AE at Datadog for three months. So, uh, yeah, I know you just started, but once you get some, like, you know, quota metrics, it's good to include those. So... You don't need to put in like the exact quota sizes, but it's good to have things like percent attainment. Um, good use of, uh, you know, putting in the skills. Skills are important to list there. Yeah, so just like how you did on HubSpot. Strategically prospect accounts, Midwestern, United States, work closely with senior account executives. Great, yep. One thing that I've done uh, on mine is you can also put in like a couple sentence blurb about what the company does because not everyone is going to know what every uh, tech company is. HubSpot's, you know, pretty pretty popular. So a lot of people know what HubSpot does, but you can do a couple sentence blurb there. Uh, one thing I would recommend um, for your bachelors, you don't need to actually put the graduation year or the, or the years. Um, I think earlier on it's better to leave it off because otherwise some people might think like you're too too young or whatever. So that's why you'll see a lot of people that they leave off the graduation year. Yeah. Yeah, so like this about section, I would make this like centric for you. Uh or you can uh, you can put some of this in like the um in the headline because this is basically this about section is being repeated within your experience section there. How long does it a BDR usually take to get promoted to an AE? Usually 12 to 18 months is kind of typical. Hey, you're a comp sci major, but not too comfortable coding. How would you make the transition to sell? Uh, so a good role for people that are more technical would be like a sales engineer or a solutions architect. So those roles um, are kind of like a hybrid between a sales rep and um, and uh, 
and a software engineer. Like you're basically expected to be the technical expert, the technical counterpart to the sales rep. So check out those roles. And depending on the company, some sales engineers and solutions architects still do some coding too. So, but obviously not as much as a software developer. Jonathan Kunsky, PayPal. Do I use a CRM and which one? You, yeah, I use um, uh, Salesforce. But yeah, if you guys enjoy this, I'm going to be doing more stuff like this. I'm just kind of testing this feature out. Um, I recently got into the subscriber program. So this is going to be one of those features where I'm going to do it as like for subscribers only. So um, you can subscribe by clicking my name in the corner. And there's like that little gold badge icon. And uh, I'm going to be doing... You know, things like this, like LinkedIn reviews, resume reviews, um, interview prep, mock interviews. We're going to do special sessions for all those there. I mentioned a resume writer before. Would you use the same person? Yeah, I've actually used her twice. Mary Southern at Resume Assassin. And she's linked in my bio too. Account executive at PayPal. So interesting banner picture. I'd be interested to know what the backstory is on on that guy there, but a uh, good profile picture. Oh, okay. There you go. There's the backstory. Currently an EMT at Aetna. Although I guess that's probably like your old description, right? Well, this is probably from back from from May. So I would probably I would definitely kind of update that. Unless you're still an EMT. But yeah, congrats on landing the role at PayPal. PayPal is definitely a great um, great company to be a sales rep at. Global merchant lending sales team, business funding consulting. Great, yes. So you might want to add, you, you might want to add, um, I mentioned this earlier, add a couple sentences about specifically like the product that you're selling at PayPal and like the benefit that it provides. So have that at the top of the description. Um, and then you'd kind of do your bullet points on your key accomplishments, including like quota attainment. So obviously right now you don't have quota attainment yet because you just started, but I would also probably do that for Sepix Technologies. Uh, just do a little blurb in terms of like what Sepix actually does, because not everyone's gonna spend the time to like Google the company. So anytime you could just like do like you know a short blurb. I, if you look on my LinkedIn, I've kind of done that. You know, you just a couple sentences, and it just lets the reader know what space you're, what space you were in, what experience you had. But yeah, having all those numbers are great. That's definitely what sales managers are looking for. Quota attainment. Yes. But yeah, that, those are the, the main things I would focus on. Oh, let's see. I got a few here. Let me uh, Let me go back to, let's see what we got here. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get quite a bit here. So I'm going to do, I can't see all of the comments. So there's going to be preferences. Preference will be to subscribers. So if you guys want to jump the line and get me to review yours, um, you can subscribe. So yes, still doing requests. Let me see who was the next one. Tannin. Tannin, I'll do, I'll do uh, Tannin F. Left her Ari. Let's see. Tan and F. Oh, yeah, I guess we are connected. Perfect. All right, Tannen. So let's see. Uh, yes, good profile picture. I like the, uh, yeah, the banner. So experience, regulatory affairs, associate, demonstrated skills. Skilled in do 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 do, so perfect. Yeah, so definitely it's a good short description there. 
I assume though, since you're following, maybe you're interested in going into tech sales. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, so this is the same similar recommendation that I gave for the other people. Um, for each of these experiences, I recommend having just a few sentences about the company in general or the product or team that you're on just to give some additional insight. Um, and then you want to quantify your accomplishments as much as you can. So like, you know, what exactly did you do as a regulatory affairs associate? How was your performance measured? How did you, how did you, how did your performance actually, you know, pan out? Um, and then even like things, things like, even like roles like this laboratory technician, um, anything that you can use to like, for like numbers or like quantify your impact are going to be great. Like. Um, this is especially important for people that are like looking for sales roles. Um, even if you're not like in a selling role, it's important to quantify your performance as much as you can because it just shows that you have the like kind of a sales sales mindset. Yep, great. Yeah, then yeah, definitely. If you have a high GPA, three point five or higher. That's when you want to, you know, leave it in your education. Otherwise, usually you want to leave it off. But in this case, definitely would leave that on there. Yes. Perfect. Oh, and then Sass Poppy. Sass Poppy, thanks for subbing. Uh, drop your drop your name since you subbed, and I will definitely review your. Um, LinkedIn first. Again, doing preference for subs. Sass Poppy. Just need your name though. Yeah, I think I remember looking at yours earlier because it looks like we yeah we were connected. So Sass Poppy, I'm not sure if I saw your name in here, but Ayo Patel, I don't think you're a subscriber because I would see the badge next to your name. Thoughts on working for a big three consulting firm, going to startups and building sales teams. Uh, it depends on what your end end result, end goal is, right? I mean, if you want to go and do software sales, I would just go straight to software sales. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the, the middle. You know, I wouldn't loop around that much and go to a big three consulting firm, going down that path, and then, and then try to pivot into tech sales in general. Try to make a as direct path as you can. Alexander Sanchez, he's the next one. So again, I'm going to be doing these in order. And then if you guys sub, I will review yours first. I know Sass Poppy, he subbed, but I don't see his name in the comments unless I missed it. But Alexander Sanchez Estrada. Alexander Sanchez Estrada. Is this one you, Alexander? I'm guessing it is. Let's see. Recent business graduate. Ooh, I, that, that's actually interesting. So good profile picture. And um, I like actually the use of that banner with the second picture. Definitely stands, stands out. First generation graduate, bachelor's in business administration. Passion about sales. Yeah, I like this about section. 
because it just gives you a quick summary in terms of like what are you really looking for this for the next role so it shows that you are interested in sales you're not just you know applying for random positions and it's also good to include hobbies too i like that because it shows you know shows that you have interests outside of work and oftentimes when um you're going through interviews they're they're also looking to see if you'd be an interesting person to work with um they call it the um the airplane test uh this is, it's more common in like investment banking where you spend a ton of time in the office but it's still very true in other roles where you know you're gonna be spending a lot of time with your coworkers. so part of the interview is they're just seeing like if they're gonna like you know like you as a person see if you have similar interests uh door-to-door -door sales representative eco shield prospect 100 so this is great yeah definitely great having those uh those numbers there 100 plus accounts 100 plus doors daily definitely shows grit closed 25 new accounts great to have that if you could quantify if you can talk about like total revenue that you brought in that would that would definitely elevate it as well you know 25 new accounts but what does that actually mean from a dollar perspective junior supervisor at strike oh the other recommendation i would have i did this mentioned this earlier as well for both eco shield and for strike you know have like you know basically what's the elevator pitch for eco shield what's the elevator pitch for strike just so that way people know like what the company is uh 20 member team generated 70 plus equipment checklist yeah so that's great yeah great use of the uh the numbers and metrics so that's definitely good too operator now this is yeah you're doing a great job of of breaking down these experiences that's the one thing i would add with these experiences here is add the um add like the elevator pitch for each one ut dallas great one thing you might you could do is you could just leave off the dates for your graduation uh, i would say up until you have like five years of experience it's probably beneficial to leave it off because then um sometimes people might have a a little bit of a bias of not wanting to hire like recent grads or like new grads and especially if you have a good amount of experience there you know you kind of want to eliminate as much bias as you can great yeah just looking at the comments here coming from non-tech backgrounds so adding metrics where you can yeah no definitely great job of adding in those metrics Catherine, yes i can do yours Catherine. Catherine's a sub and San sanchez thanks for um thanks for subbing as well Catherine, um i just need your full name unless i'm a, I'm a or actually i guess it's probably Catherine mortimer Catherine, oops. Catherine Mortimer, is this one you? Yeah, sub in. Um, you'll you'll click the name. Uh, you'll click my name in the corner. There's a the little gold, you know, star icon. Perfect. Sales leader, process layer. So this is what I was telling people. So when you think about your headline, uh, when you pro when you're reaching out to people on linkedin for example if you're just trying to get referrals and so on this like headline is pretty important because that's what really shows up like you have your name and then your headline so i like that um yeah so good profile picture um you got the the top banner picture this one's also important too so when you when you guys are working on your profiles you got to think about well how does it look like both from a mobile perspective and from uh, a computer perspective. A lot of people are doing stuff on mobile now, but sometimes if you're editing your profile on your desktop, uh, it the, the banner picture can get kind of messed up a little bit uh, when you look at it on mobile. But in this case, works great there. Um, good use of the, so the featured section, I like this. This is a good use of this section. So if you have any like relevant like certifications 
or if you have any articles that you put out, you could definitely use this featured section to put it front and center. So sales negotiations or successful negotiations, um, good certificate to show there. Let's take a look at the about section. So every section on your profile should definitely be filled out. You should get that 100% mark on, on LinkedIn. So let's take a look here. Uh, customer focus, data driven, tactical. I believe these words, words significantly describe who I am professionally. Customer focused. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, so this is great. So this about section really should be kind of like, this is your essentially like the elevator pitch about yourself. Um, and it's great to have numbers and metrics to back this up. Um, so immediately when I see this, it's giving me like a really good indication of kind of like the type of salesperson or sales leader uh, that you are. So yeah, customer focused, data driven, tactical, friendly, active. And then you have like the numbers and the stats to back it up, which is good. So uh, able to grow customers ROI, clients ROI by at least 30% within five months, record 98% customer retention. That's awesome. Thumbtack, so, oops, so we'll click here, show four experiences. Great, yes, so, yeah, I see that you recently moved into the sales manager role, which uh, which makes sense why, you know, usually people don't put in, you know, the full description, like, right away you know, when, they, when, they, when they join um, or when they change positions, so that's, you know, totally fine. But let's take a look at these other ones, team lead, senior account executive great so good description here good use of the skills career highlights uh quota attainment quota attainment definitely important to have for sales roles uh do 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 account executive two so this is a good use some people will only put like their most recent role for each company like if they've had multiple positions but if you have the data and you have the numbers to, you know, to kind of like add depth to each position, it, this is a good way to show that you're able to, you're able to grow within the company and have strong uh, career progression, which I definitely see that here. You know, you're a kind of executive for a year and a half, got promoted, and then you got promoted again, and then again to another sales manager position. So definitely great to have that built out. The only thing I would add, it would be if you have any more detail or numbers or metrics for these positions. Um, it's like customers or, or details about like the types of deals that you're working on or the types of stakeholders that you're dealing with. You could probably add that in those sections there uh, for those positions. SMB account executive outbound for Merlin, six months. So I do like that you keep the formatting consistent, which is good. That's, that's another thing that I recommend people do. If you have multiple positions, try to use the same formatting. So over here, you can see Catherine does a, does a great job of having like a short description uh, of like kind of like the key accomplishments within each role and then the quota attainment at the bottom. Makes it very easy, very readable. So I do like that there. Uh, only thing I would add maybe to this format would be maybe at Merlin, we provide we provided or we sold you know whatever product because like for me for example i don't know offhand what merlin does but it would be good just to have that short blurb so that way when recruiters or other hiring managers are going through they can kind of get an idea like did you have was this like a cybersecurity company was this the cloud company SaaS company so on compu health great yeah so this is great formatting Yep. No, this is, yeah, this, this is super, super solid. That's about the only thing, though, just like a few small things, but uh, very, very solid uh, LinkedIn there. And then especially, yeah, it looks good both when you, you know, zoom in on each individual experience and also at the, at the high level. Great.
let's see just going through and looking um look at us what else we got here i'm just trying to go through all the comments because i don't see all the comments when i'm on when i'm doing the screen share so let's see what we got here who's the next one Does the mini pitch go b before the first bullet point? Yeah, do the mini pitch first. Basically, the mini pitch on the on the on the company, and then do the bullet points. Like you want to kind of think about like similar to like what you would do when you're trying to like explain your background during an interview, right? You would you'd be telling talking to a hiring manager. You would say like, oh yeah, you know, before this role, you know, I was working at uh, X Y Z. At XYZ, we sold product ABC, which solved you know this this problem to give them some context. Jackson, Jackson is next. So, is it just Jackson Peterson? Let's see, Jackson Peterson. So there's a few Jackson Petersons. So you'll have to let me know which one. The uh, Staples, UPS. It's quite a bit. SDR at Wayho. Great. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming I don't see your picture because um, we're not connected, and it's a privacy setting. But if it's not, I sent you an invite. You definitely do want to have a headshot, especially in sales. At least I know some people don't like. Some people leave it off, but I would say for a sales role, it's important to have it. This is a good use of the banner as well. I like that where. It gives you an idea in terms of like what the company is doing or the benefits of the company. Currently working for Weho to help change the way we live, work, and travel. So yeah, yeah, this is a great blurb. So when I was telling people about doing a blurb for your experiences, this is kind of like a good a good example of a short blurb in terms of like what the company does and the value that it provides. Super weird it didn't come up. Yeah, so oh there we go. Yeah, I guess you must you must have the privacy setting where it doesn't show if you're not connected. So that's gonna be in your like privacy settings. Um it must have gotten flipped at some point. But yeah, especially as an SDR, you wanna have that enabled or you wanna have it view visible for everyone because you're obviously if you're gonna be prospecting into customers, you want them to be able to see see you. Yep, so clicking into the experiences. So yeah, when you get a chance, you know, you'll want to put in kind of like your so you you can base I would what I would do is I would kind of copy like the blurb that you have about Weho and put it in for this role for under your experience level. And then if you have you should already have maybe for at least one quarter some performance metrics that you can include. That would be great, like number of opportunities generated, the dollar size, activity volume, those sorts of things. Uh, Longhorn Steakhouse, yes, yeah, service professional, food server. If you have any like customer, if you have any awards that you won, if you have any ratings that you got from your manager or from customers, um, those are great ones to include too. But, you know, the breakdowns of like your experiences before you get into like the corporate world aren't quite as important. But for people that are trying to get that first SDR role, it will uh, it will kind of um, help you uh, stand out. Sales and marketing manager management trainee. 
Yep, good use of the good good uh, internship to have there for sure, especially for the sales role. Electrical engineer. Yep. Yeah, so I would definitely focus on like adding in as much detail as you can for the, like the way hill position, since that's kind of like the first kind of technical or you know corporate type role. Bum, bum, bum. Great. And then, yeah, another thing you can do is, and this is in general for people who just recently graduated, I would just leave off the graduation years. You don't really need to have that on your resume or on your LinkedIn's anymore, unless you have like five to 10 years of experience, then you can kind of put it on there. But in my in my experience and from what I've seen, it doesn't really it can only like potentially hurt you, although it technically shouldn't. Yep. Good that you have one recommendation. You could try to get more of those, maybe from like the Weho role. But yeah, overall overall definitely definitely solid there for sure. Yeah, definitely. This is a good example of having like a a customer, a customer centric LinkedIn profile, which is great, especially when you're prospecting, because prospects are gonna be getting messages or follow requests from from you, and immediately when they when they click on your profile, they immediately see, you know, information about the company, about the software that you're selling. So, good use of that. Could you review yours next? Yes. Adorado Paras. Yes. Cody. Yes, I will try to get to you. Is this one you, Adorado? Sass Poppy? I think so. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm just doing a preference for the... There's a priority for the um, for the subscribers, and Sass Poppy had subscribed quite a bit earlier. Providing end-to-end -end supply chain and PO management power powered by nuanced automation. Great, yeah. Strong, uh, strong profile picture. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. So, I see, I don't think you have the about section filled out. You should definitely, definitely get that added. Um, you want to try to get 100% prof uh, uh, profile completion. And usually they tell you to do the about me section. Um, like you saw in the last profile, the About Me section can be a great way to just kind of give basically your elevator pitch about what the company does and what you do. For example, at Leverage and the value that you provide. I can kind of see that with your headline, but you can add in a little bit more detail there. Uh, likewise, you'll want to add that detail on your experience level too. Um, so think about it from like the perspective of a prospect. You know, they get a they get a message from you prospect clicks on your profile and uh, that could be a great way just to kind of sell the sell what the company does uh, indirectly uh, if you could add like quota quota attainment any awards um, keywords related to the product that you're selling uh, you'll want to put those in the experience level there Enterprise fintech and SaaS business development specialist. Great, yes. So, business development specialist focused on do 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 experience do do do. Yeah. So, these are great data points. I would break it up with bullet points, and usually bullet points are a little bit more readable, at least on LinkedIn. Um, you can do the paragraph format, but I would do the paragraph format for like the short blurb, like the two three sentence blurb about what the company does. And then and then break down the experience into several uh, bullet points. But these are 
uh, great keywords there, so great starting point. Um, if you have any performance metrics as a BDR, which you should, you, I would I would add that here too. Account executive, Sprout Insurance. Yep. Yeah. So same thing with this one. Add some add some of those uh, sales metrics for that, and then probably the same thing for State Farm sales metrics too. Is it too late to join Salesforce? Probably not. Salesforce still has a ton of growth. But yeah, overall, Eduardo, yeah, good uh, good profile there. I see actually your mutual with Ding, sales wrapper. Ed, all right, will do. Thanks, Ed, and thanks for subscribing. Opinion on analysts versus sales, very different. Charge my phone, yeah. Although I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna go until like nine, so I think I should be fine. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this one, you know, I'll I'll be doing this again. This is gonna be one of the. This is one of the one of the benefits of like the subs. I'm gonna do sub only LinkedIn reviews. I have it as an open chat right now, but. For some of these like specific coaching lives, I'll 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 check the box for uh, sub only comments. Let's see who else do we have here? Who's next? I didn't keep a list. This would this is actually maybe where having like a moderator would help, because as you can see when I'm when I'm when I'm doing the screen sharing, it doesn't show me all the all the comments. But sure, let's do Justin, Justin Hairston. How long does it take to get trained? Usually it's like two to three months. You'll have like an onboarding period. Is this you, Justin? Associate SDR, I'm assuming. At Dell Tech. Great, yes. Yep. So good good profile picture. Banner. Great. Uh so similar to Ed, I would say have that about section. Um so some ideas that you can do within that about section. It should be like your your key highlights, your highlight reel. Um so maybe like key personality traits that make you like a great sales rep, uh key wins that you've had at prior experiences. If, if that section becomes definitely easier as you get more years under your belt, but would be good to start adding things there. Um, for the Dell Tech experience, basically put in like the, a little blurb about what Dell Tech does. So a good example of where where you can get this blurb from would be even just like you go on like the, the page, the, the company page on the LinkedIn. So I would just put in like, you know, Dell Tech delivers software and information solutions that enable superior levels of project intelligence, management, and collaboration. So I would add that section under here, then add your high level accomplishments or territory that you cover, um, number of opportunities that you've generated, activity levels, any awards, skills that you're working on, um, like prospecting or, or LinkedIn or um, sales navigator, marketing assistant, assist with creating social media marketing campaigns. Yeah, this is this is a great experience to have. So I would say after three years, you probably should have some like, um, you should be able to quantify your experience somehow. So if you're doing marketing campaigns, hopefully you have some like numbers and metrics to talk about for those marketing uh, experience or for those marketing campaigns like revenue that you're able to generate pipeline they're able to generate through there assist with generating ideas to help grow business if you have any specific ideas there that would be great you know you can add some like corporate lingo around them but you want to kind of quantify that experience too the retreat you did yeah so this is great so like yeah having 829 bedroom property so any anything that we can add numbers is great 
especially from a sales role perspective. Is wrap up time longer for sales for, for remote positions? Yeah, I mean, wrap up time could actually be you know upwards of like six months or even like a little bit longer. The more technical the product, the bigger the company, uh, the longer it just takes to get up to speed. Like for me personally, there have been some roles where I didn't feel fully comfortable until you know eight or ten months into it. Customer service representative. Yep. So same thing. Yeah. If you can add numbers, that'd be great too. Provided data entry organization inventory file. Yep. And then yeah, the only other recommendation too is you could just leave off the date for your education there. But overall, overall very solid. So just uh just some like formatting things to work out there and try to keep the formatting consistent too between the different experiences. What do you think about mental health apps on the app store doing tech sales for that so those mental health apps it's um that's probably more like b2b to b2c sales than b2b cody martins sure cody a2424 what's the question there any ideas Oh, uh, you have 12 plus years in sales and IT VAR, but struggling to get an AE job at SaaS companies. Any ideas? Yeah. Um, you should definitely, I'm guessing you're probably not getting referrals. You should absolutely be trying to get referrals instead of just applying cold because AE possession, positions at SaaS companies are relatively competitive. I mean, the bar isn't like super high, but you're going to want referrals for sure. Uh, to to stand out. So are you are you playing with any referrals? How is B two C different from B two B if consumers can technically be businesses such as offering? So the different the main difference between B two C versus B two B is that the deals are just more complex, right? So if you think about it, B two C selling a health app right to another consumer, uh, that's you know that's really just. Um, you know, it's only one person that's involved with that decision. It's a relatively low budget. Um, and like the deal's not going to take that long to close. When you're selling software to big companies, you know, you're potentially dealing with projects that are costing several hundreds of thousands of dollars. They have multiple teams involved. Um, so there's multiple decision makers. The product itself is more complex. So there's a lot that goes into it that makes the sale more complex than, you know, um, selling an app to consumers. You think that I've been at the same company for 12 years also hurting me? Uh, you know, it depends. I mean, if, if you've had solid career growth within that company and you haven't been in like the exact same role for 12 years, I think that's good. But where it potentially could hurt you would be like yeah if you're in the exact same role for 12 years then maybe but cody i need to know is this one you there's a few cody's put less years of experience on the resume you could <laughs> Or me, or you just break it up. You want to make sure you break up the role as as much as you can to show like clear progression. Charge my phone. Yes, it's it's getting low, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna do maybe one more. I think Cody's Cody's the last one. I'll I'll do more of these though. Let me know if you guys like these formats of of just doing like resume formats, and then and then still answering questions. <laughs> Ideally, what I would like to do is like a guest request as well, but I guess you can't do guest request and screen sharing at the same time. Company is White Space Health. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Cody. So, good profile picture. The um, one thing I would add is use that banner picture. So this can be valuable from a sales perspective. Um, 
So if you use a banner related to your company in terms of like the benefits that you can provide, great way to get attention. Uh, good use of the headlines and having some keywords there. You're kind of like balancing keywords, but then also having like client relevant information in there. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah, happy to provide it. Uh, so let's see the about section. So yeah, so with these about sections, you can kind of do it two ways. One, you can kind of do it very customer centric where this is purely about the value that you're going to provide as a sales rep to the customer. So in this case, it's all about the current role that you're in. Other ways that you can use the about section is you, you kind of make it a bit more um, centric about or, or more centered on your own experiences themselves. And you kind of use it as a highlight reel about your different experiences. So this is perfectly fine. This is actually, this is great as a, as a sales rep. Um, so immediately, without me even like knowing about what white space health does, this tells me very quickly, you know, what value you could potentially drive. And, you know, if I'm a prospect, this lets me know whether or not I should even respond to your message or not. So very good use of that. Um, so I'm, I'm clicking onto your experiences. I don't think you have these detailed out, but as a sales rep, I would say at a minimum, you should have like your performance metrics for these different roles. So um, for SDRs and BDRs or sales reps, if you can quantify the pipeline that you generated, if you have any awards, if you're able to quantify your performance compared to your peers, that's great to have. And then just as like you did like a little blurb here, White Space Health automates the delivery of revenue cycle and operational KPIs. Do that for these other experiences too, for Demand Drive, for Cambria, and Smart Street Media. So just to give people a quick idea, like because me personally, I, I haven't heard of these companies, but then again, there's a lot of companies I haven't heard of. There's so many tech startups out there, which is why it, it's more it's it's fairly important i think to have a quick just a little blurb on what these companies do because if you're let's say if you're applying for other positions it lets the hiring manager know whether or not you have direct experience in that same industry or not yep that's the quick feedback there cody Perfect. So, if you guys, uh, if you guys enjoyed this, um, I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be doing, you know, more of these, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna schedule these too. So, for the subscribers, and thanks for everyone that subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can click on my name in the corner where it says Tech Sales Tom. There should be a little gold badge, and you can subscribe. I'm gonna be doing, I'm, I'm working on a schedule to basically do more of these specific coaching sessions for subs including LinkedIn reviews, resume reviews, interview prep, mock interviews, and then deep dives into different sessions. So if you uh, if you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe both to the profile and to the sub program, and then keep an eye out. I'm going to put it on my uh, LinkedIn live or LinkedIn or sorry, on my Instagram. I'm going to do an Instagram story highlight that's going to have the schedule listed out and then maybe i'll put the schedule on the main page too um but thanks again everyone hope you have a great night and see you guys later